hey, I think you caught me. I'm looking at a 2024 Banks L5P. Uh, that's not what this story is all about. This story is all about the charge air cooling change we're making here in Dyno 2. We haven't been in Dyno 2 for quite a while. We've been running government jobs in here, uh, specifically having to do with high horsepower hybrid army vehicles. And that's all I can say on that subject. Uh, you know we do the L5P, Banks version of the L5P, uh, currently for the JLTV, the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. And we're coming up on 20,000 of those engines since we started that program. And we've been chosen for the next version of the uh, JLTV called the A2. This is an A2 engine as we receive it from Duramax, and it's been banked at Duramax. So the lower crankcase, you'll notice banks here. The lower, to see banks on this casting, you have to look underneath. It's for gophers only, you know. But this whole lower portion of the engine and all the oil control that happens in there, anti-aeration, reduction in temperature, increase in horsepower, uh, all that happens by putting the bank stuff on. It also helps it, the, the engine tilt, uh, as it does in military vehicles, quite a lot. This is the first Banks second gen L5P to see the light of day. The native horsepower on this engine for the pickup trucks has been announced. So this is 470 horsepower up 25 horsepower over the first gen L5Ps, and the torque is 975, so that kicks the torque up 65 pound-feet. There's a lot going on on this engine, and that'll be an upcoming video very soon. We're going to basically tear down the, one of these engines and show you what's different and compare it to the current engine. Today, I wanted to talk to you about how we do charge air cooling in the dyno cell and how we duplicate liquid coupled, which is what we run in the, in other words, air to water, which is what we run in the cell and what, which we run in all our marine engines. And we run a lot in our racers as well, especially at Bonneville. What we've had in here was this charge air cooler which dates way back. It's a core design that we've been using whew, since around 2000. Uh, we did some Cummins-based twin turbocharged engines for the Navy to use. We also used this charge air cooler design for a V8 version, some experimental engines we did for Marine on both twin turbo and super twin turbo. Also, the Dakota we ran at Bonneville used this assembly or this style, and it ran that same style on the, the Hot Rod Power Tour. In fact, that year we had like four diesel trucks and one twin turbo small block 90 Chevy short bed, which in its original life was a 454 SS. We used to put the charge air coolers on the floor. You might ask, why is it overhead? Why, what, is, what is this? And why is there going to be two of them? Well, first of all, if you're running any kind of compound turbo setup, you really want to charge air cool, or in this case, intercool between the first compressor and the second compressor. That's the true origin of the name intercooler. We're able, with overhead water, and you can see the valves here to turn them on and off, we're able to control the flow rate through each one so we can duplicate the performance of an air-to-air -air intercooler in a car or truck or any air-to-water intercooler. We just look at the amount we're increasing the air density through the intercooler. And oh, by the way, intercoolers 
make more horsepower than the turbocharger or the blower. Yes, you heard me right. The intercooler makes more power than the blower or the turbo. Let me show you how the intercooler works. To the bench. All right, it's no lightweight. If it were a casting, it would be much lighter. We made these two out of billet. Now let me tell you the history of this thing. It starts with this core. Uh, it's 9010 Cooper o nickel or brass where the water flows through it just in case it's seawater, salt water, or you're running it on Salt Lake, although is that lake still there? But the whole idea of this in the original form was my marine engines. So that's why it's a premium materials. Makes it a little heavy, but it lasts forever. This is a highly efficient, by that I mean temperature recovery, low pressure drop system. And we attend to its flow capacity with large inlet and outlet elbows, if you will. So we're using all the surface area on each side. We're not masking or distorting it at all. We've got reinforcements on the top and on the bottom, so this thing won't oil can or blow apart if the boost is in the hundreds of pounds with a com big compound system. So, the body, of course, is billet, hell for stout. So in this design, we've made the water a double pass. So there's a separator on the front end of the charge air cooler that bridges here. Water goes in through half the core, hits the turnaround cap, and returns through the other half of the core. So this is a two pass on the water side and a single pass on the air side. Or two pass on the cold side, one pass on the hot side, however you want to do it. To make the assembly, we slip a Viton O-ring over the core down to the front flange of the core, then insert the core until it touches the front sealing surface for that O-ring. Next, we put the O-ring on the turnaround cap and we insert the turnaround cap into the back end of the core. We then install the turnaround cap cover with its tensioning bolt, which we will adjust later to touch the turnaround cap so it will not push out of the core. Next comes the front O-ring that seals the water supply cap to the front of the core and the housing. We tighten that, torque that, and then we feed in the tensioning bolt till it touches and jam the jam nut, and it's assembled. Final thing on this assembly is the inlet and outlet elbows, and then we're through. Wait a minute. I forgot, I left out the drain cocks. This gives you a picture here of what the core looks like in the housing. And you have to rotate the core so the flat of the outlet surface and the flat on the core are parallel with each other. So before you tension any of those cap bolts, that guy's got to be square with the world. So using this core and this type of housing, just one of these, you can sustain about 1,200 horsepower on a diesel engine forever in seawater with one of the, just one of these. In our dyno cell, because we can control it, I can duplicate the ocean. I can do a liquid coupled air to liquid to air like you might do in a vehicle. I can intercool between the first compressor and the second one with a compound turbo system, or I can do the same thing using a supercharger feeding a turbo or a pair of turbos. But we will not run out of charge air cooler in either one of those dynos when I'm done. So I'm going to show you guys this pair of intercoolers in action when we dyno that 2024 Duramax. But first, I'm going to blow that engine apart and show you what's inside. Boy, I can't wait for this. Let's get it on. <laughs> 